Next objective is going to be endometrial cancer. And here's the example of a kind of question they would have on the shelf for the boards. A patient comes in. She's 67 years old. She is 15 years menopausal. She has an elevated blood pressure, BMI. She's diuretic, I'm sorry, diabetic and controlled on glucophage. She has a normal pap smear and a normal pelvic exam. And she has been spotting. What do you do? So if somebody has postmenopausal bleeding, remember the major causes are going to be atrophy and endometrial pathology, either hyperplasia or cancer. And also remember that the farther you get away from menopause, the more likely it is that it is not atrophy but cancer. These are normally picked up earlier. And the diagnostic test that I would still recommend everyone choose is going to be an endometrial biopsy. Now, another choice, and they're not going to ask you to pick which one, but another choice would be to get a transvaginal ultrasound with an endometrial stripe. <coughs> and even with a additional studies like a sonohistogram. But this is not something that is currently standard of care for at least the shelf exam. And remember that it is only useful if it's less than 4 millimeters. If it's more than 4 millimeters, then you need to go ahead and get sampling anyway. You can also do hysteroscopy, but remember the hysteroscopy is more expensive, more dangerous than an endometrial biopsy, and I would still recommend that everyone do that for the first test. And your diagnosis here in this case is going to be endometrial cancer. Now there are two types of endometrial cancer, one and two. Type one is the one that everyone's familiar with. It's caused by estrogen. And I believe on the next page also there's risk factors for increased estrogen. And really number one is going to be obesity, unopposed premarin, granulosa cell tumor, which secretes estrogen, use of tamoxifen, which is really associated with high-grade tumors, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and Lynch 2 syndrome. About 40% of these patients have endometrial cancer. And these are usually grade 1 tumors. Type 2 is actually very similar or identical to ovarian cancer. It's not caused by estrogen. And if they give you a presentation on the board, it's going to be a little old lady who has a normal BMI uh, with no other risk factors, and she comes in spotting, and she's postmenopausal. And you're sure that it's going to be atrophy, and it turns out to be clear cell or papillary serous cancer. The prognosis is much worse. And these may be associated with P53 mutations. So again, here's the risk factors we talked about. Obesity, uncontrolled, unopposed Premarin, granulosa cell, tamoxifen, Lynch 2, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Nulliparity implies that the patient is anovulatory, but if somebody is nulliparous because they've been taking birth control pills for 20 years, their risk of endometrial cancer is actually decreased. And people always talk about diabetes and hypertension being risk factors for endometrial cancer, but these are really um, not independent from being obese. These are complications of obesity. So how do you make the diagnosis? Number one, do not choose a pap smear. It's only positive about 25% of the time. Endometrial biopsy is somewhere up to 95% accurate. And again, the major problem is that patients don't tolerate it. It's uncomfortable so you wind up abandoning the procedure, or they have stenosis. You can either, as an alternative, get a transvaginal ultrasound or do it instead of the endometrial biopsy, and again, the cutoff is 4 millimeters. It has a very strong predictive negative value if you have a thin stripe, about 95 plus percent. But if it's more than 4 millimeters, it does not have a strong positive predictive value. It means you have to get a tissue diagnosis. Or you can do a DNC if the endometrial biopsy fails, or you can do a hysteroscopy if the endometrial biopsy fails. Now, what's the treatment for endometrial cancer? The curative treatment is going to be a hysterectomy, and it would normally be a simple hysterectomy, so it would be a total abdominal or a total laparoscopic or a robotic. These are all simple hysterectomies. A vaginal hysterectomy has been done very commonly because these patients are very obese sometimes. It's recommended to remove the ovaries primarily because they may have microscopic METs or they may have another what's called synchronous ovarian tumor. 
We do peritoneal cytology routinely, but recently peritoneal cytology has been dropped as a major risk factor for endometrial cancer, but you may still see it on your boards. You do a lymph node dissection if it is, quote, advanced, unquote. And what's that mean? It means it's either a high-grade tumor or a deeply invasive tumor or a combination of that with or without cervical involvement. If you find that you have deep invasion, high-grade, et cetera, you can offer adjuvant radiation, <clears throat> and the most effective thing to do is to radiate the vaginal cuff if your lymph nodes are negative. The most important thing to monitor is the vaginal cuff because that's the most common site of recurrence. And you do that especially if they have not had radiation therapy. And most of these recurrences occur within two years. I believe it's as high as 90% of them. So once you get past two years, you really are in much better shape. Now, what do you do about a recurrence? If you have a vaginal cuff recurrence, especially with a low-grade tumor, you would want to radiate it. For distant recurrences, if you look at all the quiz books and everything, you'll always see hormonal therapy listed as the answer. However, the problem with this is that if you have metastatic high-grade endometrial cancer, your chance of response to hormonal therapy or anti-hormonal therapy is very poor. For that reason, sometimes oncologists will recommend going ahead with standard chemotherapy. These patients are usually not cured unless they're in the cuff, and I believe about one-third to one-half of patients with cuff recurrences can be cured. And unfortunately, <clears throat> if you compare this to breast cancer, where patients will often have metastatic disease for years and years, uh, they respond for years to tamoxifen, et cetera, or megase, we don't see that kind of response with endometrial cancer. And that is it. <clears throat>